standing in front of the tombstone of uh, Joseph Parsons, known to his friends as Josh Parsons. He was a 26-year-old private of the 96th Regiment. Uh, he died of typhus fever on August the 1st, 1848. And that can be caused by bites from lice or mites, which the settlement was renowned for back then. Grave, it's tombstone itself is split in three pieces currently. You can just make out the markings. Just show you a picture now. Josh's tombstone in better days. Now the next tombstone we're looking at is one of Alfred William Drake. Alfred died of asphyxia on the 10th of June 1845 when he was six months old. Alfred was the son of a soldier of the 96th Regiment that was based here at the coal mines. An inquest was held in, um, to the cause of his death a couple of days after he died and it decided that the uh, deceased died by the visitation of God. Quite a few fragments on this one. You can just see Alfred there, 96, died suddenly 10th of June. I had a look around here but I can't find the missing pieces. I expect they may not ever get found. At least we have a little record here. Alfred's passing. Now there's another tombstone located close to Alfred's. There's no distinguishable markings on it apart from sacred to the memory. After researching the deaths registered outside of the Port Arthur complex, I have a strong belief that this tombstone belongs to a Harriet Huston. H-U-S-T-O-N. Harriet died of dysentery at the age of 17 months um, on the 18th of January 1848. Father was the uh, medical officer G. W. Huston, who was um, located here at the coal mines. All I can see is sacred to the memory of my very good imagination. Possibly see a H there. And there's two fragments. That's all I can find currently. Um, and that's probably all that will be found. There was also another tombstone located here, um, I believe right near the end of Alfred's tombstone. Um, I think Alfred's tombstone was a little bit further away than um, originally than it is now. Um, the tombstone that was here was moved to Port Arthur in 1918. So thanks to the kind um, officials at Port Arthur, um, that allowed us to have a look at it. So I'll we'll pop over now and have a look. I'm in the um, Port Arthur where they archives where they hold all the collection of different stuff. And this is the actual tombstone of the Mary Ann Thomas, who was born at the coal mines on the 23rd of June, 1846. Uh, her father was John Edward Thomas, a shoemaker by trade, but he was employed as a cook overseer at the coal mines. Her mother was Mary Ann Thomas, formerly Donovan. 
Mary Ann died on the 11th of January 1847, aged seven months, from diarrhoea. The tombstone was moved from the coal mines to Port Arthur around 1918. So it's very different than the other tombstones at the coal mines. Uh, sacred to the memory, Mary Ann Thomas. And I died six months, 20 days. So, see a bit missing out of there, which I'm going to investigate further. Um, when we go back, there we go, Mary Ann Thomas. These weren't the only children uh, known to be buried at the coal mines. Uh, there were two boys, the Hearst boys, who were the sons of an overseer um, that worked down here at the coal mines. Uh, we'll pop down now near the main penitentiary and have a look at that. I'm standing outside the solitary cells uh, on the 1938 barracks. And on this side, we have a couple of markers. One is office and guard room. And this one here is engineer's store. Now that bit there is not correct. The engineer's store is over in that direction, I believe, going off the 1842 drawings of this place that were quite accurate. But I do believe where this stick is, and where I'm standing now, there's a small brick cottage, one room, a fireplace, and the house is where James Hurst resided. He came out from England as a convict. He'd have been sentenced for highway robbery with his father. They came from Oldham in England where they were both miners. Due to his mining experience, he played a major part in the development of the coal mines being here from the beginning, and although they were a few gaps in between almost to the end of the mining here after the convicts left and the civilians took over. The reason why I know he lived here is a convict named Bill Thompson recorded that opposite the solitary cells, which we are now, were three buildings of brick. That's the first one in front of me there. The second one, I just showed you with a stick, and the third one is under that tree, or what's left of it, under the tree. Now in the cottage on the saltwater riverside, which is this one, lived an overseer called Jimmy Miller, and the next cottage was occupied by James Hurst. The final end here was the police and magistrate's office. Now the door on this one here faced in the direction I'm looking now though on the uh, sign as you come into the coal mines the first brick wall thingy um, they call it the engineer's store that's incorrect again uh, there was a doorway here which faced north the engineer's store's doorway faced west so it's incorrectly marked there as well anyway in 1842 James was pardoned and in 1843 he married Mary Ann Hadworth when she was 14 years old. Uh, James and her resided in this cottage and in June of 1845 William Hurst was born though he died in November of the same year, uh, cause unknown. A year later they had a son Matthew who did survive and this was followed by Joseph who was born in November of 1848, but died shortly after. There's no uh, register of death for Joseph. There was a birth, but not of death. Uh, so we can assume he was a very young infant. Um, after Joseph, there was Mary Ann, who lived until she was 14, but sadly, she died of TB in Hobart. Now, something to back up the theory of where the two boys were buried was in 1859 James Hurst when he renewed the lease down here for the coal mines 
he brought a reporter from the Mercury and some others on a boat. The boat landed down on what remained of the old Long Wharf, which is right down there, and the party came up the track here, close to where this track is that we walk on now, and they passed a cottage there where James Hurst resided previously and mentioned the enclosed grave in which two of his children are buried. So coming up there they would have seen the back of this cottage here. Um, previously there's two cottages here but they would have seen the back so the grave would have been somewhere over here with the two boys in them. Now, there's nothing left at all that I can see. There's nothing to say they were built enclosed in stone or brick or wood, so it doesn't say what the enclosure was. I'm standing now on what I believe is, was, where the engineer store was, keeping in mind that this ground has all been filled up with crap coming out of the mines and whatnot, and parts that were here now that weren't there. But over in this area here, There is a bit of a brick foundation right behind the cottage, but it goes for some length, so it could well be uh, the outline of an outhouse. I'm not sure. So, over here, sorry, Gracie, who's patiently waiting, there are some stones placed. do travel possibly along to here. Again, that could be something completely different. But I can safely, fairly safely assume that within this little area here were the two Hearst boys' um, graves. Hopefully we'll find one day where the um, Hearst boys were buried. After the convicts were removed from uh, the coal mines, it was leased to um, private individuals. And we're going to go over and have a look at a grave of Thomas Richardson. Gracie and I are on the hunt for another tombstone down here of Thomas Richardson. Quite difficult crawling through this stuff, but I'm very happy to announce that after hours spent on this, I finally located it. And there's the grave there. On the grave it says, in memory of Thomas Richardson, who departed this life April 18th, 1855, aged 13 months and four days. Uh, the father was James and the mother was a Mary Cutmore and this is when the um, coal mines are in private hands. Um, 1855, um, the private contractors were here. The convicts had left about 1848. So a nice little spot here. Not too sure why in this area here they would have placed the grave but Things were different back then, all this would have been cleared, not the thick bush that you're seeing here now. Uh, but still, maybe the parents had a wooden hut here or something, but I would have thought the miners were staying up at the main the main base here. So, so this will probably be the last time I see this. As the um, scrub here is very very thick Grace and I are standing on the foreshore of the coal mines on a rather stormy day I think I've discovered a tombstone that's not been documented before. 
lies in about a metre and a half of water, probably about 30 metres off the foreshore in the coal mines area. It has no markings on it that I can see, but, then, but it may be upside down. I think if you did turn it over, it would be covered with um, seaweed, mollusks and whatever was under there would be unreadable anyway. It's in a couple of pieces, so I'm certainly had no intention of uh, touching it at all. I'll leave that to the experts. So we'll have a look at that now and see what you think. Seriously, guys, I really don't know what we're doing here. Come on, let's look another way. 